Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you how to identify all cyclic subgroup of a group and determine whether a group is cyclic. Now, we are given a group G consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a binary operation star and the Kelly table is given for you. The first part is to identify what is the identity element E of this group. Then we're going to decide all the cyclic subgroup of G and determine whether G is cyclic. To do this, let's look at how we answer the question first. First of all, what is identity element? We notice that 1 times x is equal to x from the table. This, this whole row, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, and so on. So 1 times x is equal to x all the time. And also we look at the column x times 1. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 1 is 4, and so on. So you have x times 1 is also equal to x. Therefore, the identity element is 1, e is equal to 1. This answer for the first part. Then, for the second part, we are going to find out all the cyclic subgroup now. According to John Fairline text, a first course in abstract algebra, section 6, page 59, the cyclic subgroup A, cap A of G is generated by A, is it's a group H here, it consists of A power N, where N is an integer. Cyclic subgroup generated by 1, is 1, sub with 1, since 1 times 1 is always 1, all the time, so the cyclic subgroup generated by 1 is 1. How about cyclic subgroup generated by 2? So you start with 2, then 2 times 2, we find out 2 times 2 is equal to 5, right? So 2 times 2 is equal to 5. Alright, then multiply by 2 again. So 5 times 2, in this case, 5 times 2, 5 times 2, we get 6 here. So we multiply by 2, 5 times 2, we get 6, so we get 6 here. Then multiply by 2 again. You keep on multiply by 2, you get power of 2. So 6 times 2, and you get 1. Then afterward, you repeat again. So in this case, you can also see that 6 times 2 get 1, so 6 is the inverse of 2, right? So notice that 6 is the inverse of 2, that means 6 is 2 inverse, in this case, as 6 times 2, you get 1. So the cyclic group generated by 2 is the same as cyclic group generated by 6 now, because 6 is the inverse of 2. Now let's try another element now. So let's try. So the cyclic group generated by 3, we start with 3 power 1, then 3 power 2, and 3 power 3, and so on, right? Start with 3 power 1. 3 times 3, in this case, is 5. So 3 power 2 is 5. Then 3 times 3 times 3 will be 5 times 3. So 5 times 3, you get 7. So you get 7 here. Then, multiply by 3 again. 7 times 3, you get 1. So, afterward, you get 1 times 3, you get 3. You repeat again. So, the inverse of 3 is actually 7. So we know that Okay, 7 is actually 3 inverse, as we find out that 7 times 3 equal to 1, and what 3 times 7 equal to 1. Therefore, this cyclic group generated by 3 is the same as the cyclic group generated by 7. And let's look for another one. Let's look at the cyclic group generated by 4. So start with 4, then 4 times 4 is equal to 5. 4 times 4 is equal to 5, so 4 power 2 is 5. Then multiply by 4 again, so 5 times 4 in this case, so 5 times 4, you'll find that it's 8. So I have 8 here, 
Then multiply by 4 again. 8 times 4, you get 1. And then multiply by 4 again, get, get back 4 again. And so, it again, we will find, observe that the 8 here is the inverse of 4 because 8 times 4 is 1. So the cyclic group generated by 4 is the same as the cyclic group generated by 8 and need not to repeat again. So let's find out the cyclic group generated by 5. So in group 5 to power 1, then 5 power 2, 5 times 5, in this case is 1. So 5 times 5 is 1. So that is all because the next time we want multiply by 5, get 5 again. So I have listed out all the cyclic group now. Cyclic group generated by two, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 and 7 and 8 I don't need to list out because they are just repetition generated by 2, 3 and 4. Okay, let's look at the cyclic subgroup again. As a recap, the cyclic subgroup generated by 2 is the set of element 2 power n, where n belongs to z. So it could be 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4, 2 power 5, and so on. You end up that these are 2, 5, 6, 1. And then repeat over and over again. Similarly, the cyclic subgroup generated by 4 is actually 4 power n and belong to z now. So you see 4 power 1, 4 power 2, 4 power 3, and so on. We end up this is 4, 5, 8, 1. So having found out all the cyclic subgroup, now we can conclude whether the group G is cyclic now. So from here, according to John Fraheim text, a first course and I said algebra section 6, page 59. If G is equal to a power n where m for a power n where m belongs to z, then a is the generator of G and G is a cyclic group. Now in this case, we notice that G is not equal to any of the cyclic group A for any A inside G. Right? For any A inside G. Because why? Because we find out the size of the cyclic subgroup we found is either 1, 2, or 4. We can notice that the size of the cyclic subgroup is first one is 1, second one is 4, third one is 4, fourth one is 4, and fifth one is 2. Therefore, none of them have the same size as G, as the group G has 8 elements. Therefore, we conclude that G is not equal to any of the cyclic subgroup generated or any A inside G, so G is not cyclic. And this is the end of the recording.